You can listen to The Front on your smart speaker every morning. To hear the latest episode, just say, play the news from The Australian. From The Australian, here's what's on the front. I'm Claire Harvey. It's Thursday, July 18. Australia is accepting Israel's explanation for the airstrike that killed aid worker Zomi Frankham in Gaza. Frankham and her colleagues from the World Central Kitchen charity died instantly on April 1 in what the Israeli Defence Force said was a tragic accident. The Albanese government sent former Defence Chief Mark Binskin to investigate the deaths. And today, the Australian reveals Binskin will recommend new protocols for international aid organisations working in war zones. The Greens want Labor to overrule the Reserve Bank of Australia if it tries to hike interest rates again. That story is part of the Australian series on the small party with big ambitions. And it's live now at theaustralian.com.au. If you live in the bush, you're probably listening to the front via satellite, like Elon Musk's Starlink network, which has become a crucial part of Australia's food belt. In today's episode, we'll dive into the big issues for the bush, including patchy internet and why you might be eating mince for dinner tonight. I'm willing to bet you're cooking dinner at home much more often these days. And I reckon you've cut back on takeaway coffee. Times are tight. And at the supermarket, we're buying stuff in tins and stuff on special. But here's the twist. Many Australians are also buying more expensive supermarket products. Here's Cole's Chief Commercial Officer, Anna Croft. Definitely a trend in frozen and bulk uh, as customers become really savvy around how they shop. Croft is speaking at the Australian's Global Food Forum, a gathering of farmers, manufacturers, retailers and investors we hold every year. But we are seeing customers trading into the premium tier. So there's no doubt as customers are eating more at home, that premium section across lots of our brands coming through and we're seeing that in our Coles Finest up kind of 20%. At the independent supermarket chain IGA Richie's, they call it the mincemeat index. We're finding our mince sales, beef mince, chicken mince, is through the roof. And that's an indication that people are trading down perhaps from a steak and instead buying the cheaper cuts of meat. This is the boss of IGA Richie's, Fred Harrison. He's talking at the Food Forum to our retail reporter, Eli Greenblatt. I don't think people are making a lovely specific meal five nights a week. I think people are making big batches of food. We know now our pasta sales are through the roof and the ingredients that go in, the the pasta sauces, etc. And people are making big batches and might put it in the fridge or the freezer Mm. and use that two or three times through the week. And that twist again, we're buying a nicer kind of mince. It is a little bit more the premium end too, not just the cheapest mince Mm -hmm. cuts, some of the premium minces, but Mm. that category Mm. is going strength to strength. So we're shopping more, but we are not loving the supermarkets right now. Allegations of price gouging and excessive market power have Coles and Woolies under pressure. But the retailers are suffering with the cost of living too, as manufacturers push up prices and the cost of fuel and energy soars. And so are suppliers. Jeff Kennett is the former Premier of Victoria and now chair of the original juice company. Right now, the public are looking around more than ever before for value. And that's tough on all the supermarkets, small and large. But there is a point at which the public says, I'm not going to pay more than this price Mm. for a litre and a half of juice. So we're getting squeezed one end. The public, understandably, are squeezing us at the end. And I'm drinking more whiskey. (laughs) Here's a little example from IGA Richie's. Fred Harrison says on July 1, 2023, the company's costs in Victoria rose by $4 million in government charges overnight. That was an increase in payroll tax, a mental health levy and work cover. That's just one state. Governments are (laughs) screwing the private sector. They're screwing them. Why is it always the poor bloody supermarkets Mm. who are actually delivering the farmers' products employing the people, paying the taxes and charges, 
who were being whipped to death. And here's another challenge, staff. We're finding people want to come in and perhaps work in the store, but they don't want any responsibility. So to get management, whether it be store management or deli managers or produce managers, no, I just want to come in, work nine to five, have no hassles, don't want to take on responsibility. Getting leaders is one of the biggest problems in Australia at the moment. And they want to serve in the supermarket from home, don't they? That's they don't right. Want to go to- <laughs> Thank you. Supermarkets are so unpopular right now that there's a strange double act. The Coalition and the Greens both want the power to force the powerful duopoly, Coles and Woolies, to break up. It sounds good, right? More owners, more competition, hopefully lower prices and better deals for workers and suppliers. But Anna Croft from Coles told Eli she doesn't think it would work. We run 850 supermarkets across, obviously, their whole national footprint. And I think we have a very large fixed cost base. And if that was 750 supermarkets, it actually wouldn't make a meaningful difference to our cost base. And therefore, it would really impede our ability to fractionalise those costs across our business and to drive greater efficiency. And therefore, as a result of that, that could Mm. or may lead to higher prices for customers. IGA Richie's has a different take. Asked if they could buy supermarkets in, say, regional Queensland if Coles or Woolies was forced to sell them off, Fred Harrison said this. Look, in the instance of Richie's, we, yep. we probably could. However, it's not quite as simple as the government saying you've got to offload 100 stores or so. Mm. There's landlords involved and landlords have made decisions and borrowed money and have commitments and cap rates that are important to them. And... A lot of these Coles, Woolies stores pay significant rents that independents aren't Mm. necessarily in a position to match that rent. Fred Harrison poses another solution. Draw a line in the sand and accept the duopoly as it is for the moment. But then plan for a future which gives shoppers more options. In other words, instead of having Woolies, Coles on every second or third street corner, what we could possibly do before a new site is approved, whether it be a greenfield site or an acquisition, is do a competition test and say, OK, in that market, a five kilometre radius, mm-hmm. say in Metro, how many Woolies or Coles are there there now? And is there an independent or good independent in that area or an Aldi? Mm-hmm. I think the more independents that get out there, the better it's going to be for competition in the long run. After the break, why frustrated farmers have turned to Elon Musk's space program to get reliable internet. The Global Food Forum, sponsored by Vizi, is part of how the Australian gets into the contest of ideas, from the city to the sticks. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. Starlink. If you've heard of it, you might know this is one of the businesses owned by the world's richest man, Elon Musk. It's probably the business, rather than Tesla or Twitter, that makes Musk so influential. Starlink is a satellite internet provider fired by Musk's SpaceX rockets. One ignition. And the star of Falcon 9. Go SpaceX. Go Starlink. Musk's big innovation was to create reusable rockets which can launch into space, set satellites into a low orbit and then return to Earth to be deployed all over again. On the grim battlefields of Ukraine, Russian and Ukrainian soldiers alike are buying Starlink boxes so they can connect to the world. And in the Australian bush, anyone who wants reliable internet is also buying a Starlink box. They're about $360, and then you pay around $140 a month to connect. Starlink says it has more than 200,000 customers in Australia. We've had Starlink for quite a while. I still have my NBN Skymaster. I'm big on having a bit of security and redundancy. This is Georgie Somerset. She's a farmer and a grazier. And she's one of those powerful country women who has turned speaking up for the bush into her lifetime's calling. 
But our businesses have become very reliant on being connected. So it's not a, it'd be nice to have mobile coverage. It's actually we rely on it for telemetry and observations and, and things like that now. And when we saw one of the satellites fail last year, that's directing our tractors. That's our data and our, our planting and our harvesting data. You know, so we're, this is not a nice to have. It's a actual business operations 101 to have connectivity now. She's on the board of the ABC, a director of the National Farmers Federation, and the general president of AgForce Queensland. For many farmers, local internet providers just aren't cutting it. Sales of the NBN satellite services have been in rapid decline, the number of connections falling almost 20% in the first quarter of this year alone. Starlink says it delivers between 100 and 250 megabits of download per second across Australia. That's up to twice as fast as 4G. While Georgie's keeping her SkyMaster service, many others are not. It's not just connecting to the internet which is fraught. Some regional areas could lose their phone reception in coming months. Telstra will shut down their 3G services, also known as their Next G networks, in August. Optus isn't far behind, with their 3G networks to shut down in September. While most of Australia moved off the 3G network to 4G and 5G long ago, some regional areas still don't receive those signals. For some, this goes beyond being able to make a phone call or send a text. Older automated farming equipment, which uses the 3G network, will also become obsolete. Georgie Somerset says the cost of living crisis in the bush is a little different. And I think it's interesting when you hear that they talk about sort of 20% of people are chasing the specials. You often don't have that privilege of chasing the specials when you're only going to town once every couple of weeks. Are you seeing changes in uh, the ability of families to remain on the land, to remain producing food? I'm not seeing a diminution of that at the moment, but what I think we'll see is probably more families doing the labour, so less labour units required, which then can have a flow through in rural communities. And when those families go, it has a flow on to schools and things like that as well. It's a tricky conundrum. An artwork by The Australian's cartoonist Johannes Leek has prompted Green Senator Maureen Faruqi to threaten legal action. To see the cartoon and read why Faruqi is upset, join our subscribers at theaustralian.com.au.